Hello and welcome to the first video in a course on abstract algebra. In this course, I plan to cover uh, pretty much uh, the material you'd see in an undergraduate course on abstract algebra. Um, so in order not to make the videos very long, uh, I figured that I should have some slides to go over while I'll be uh, spending time to write uh, explanations and proofs down when needed. So before we begin our first lecture, uh, let me just uh, give you um, a rough idea of what's going on in this course. Um, so before the 19th century, um, um, the term algebra used to refer to um, the study of polynomials. Uh, however, as problems got more complicated, um, um, the term abstract algebra came into existence and um, a new field um, um, a new field came into existence. Uh, so what's the big picture? Well, um, in abstract algebra, uh, what we do is that uh, we study um, what's so-called algebraic structures. And, and what I mean by algebraic structures here is, is you can think of it as a set um, plus an operation. Or let's say operation or operations. So, um, so what we do is that um, we, we, we consider a set of mathematical objects and we... Um, we equip that set with uh, with an operation that acts on its elements. Um, so 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 you already know a uh, quite a good example of algebraic structures. For example, vector spaces are algebraic structures. Um, uh, for example, um, the, the the set of integers is an algebraic structure, um, uh, and you already know a quite good number of these. Uh, but you you didn't know these as um, algebraic structure. You were dealing with these as um, mathematical objects. So what we're going to do in this course, we're going to abstract this notion. We're going to give these algebraic structures that you, that you have knowledge of, uh, we're going to give them names, and we're going to study them and their properties. Um, and the first example, um, the first uh, category of um, algebraic structure um, is what's so-called uh, groups. Right. So, um, so what is a group? Right. So, uh, so what we do is that we take a set. Right. We take a set and we um, we equip it with what's so called a binary operation. So I'm gonna cl I'm I'm gonna clarify these terms. But before I do that, before I give you the example of um, the first example of, before I give you the, the mathematical definition of what a group is, uh, it, it would be uh, nicer to start with, um, uh, with what you know, right? Um, so let me give you an example of a group that you already know, right? You already um, have dealt with. So for example, if you consider the integers, right? Z, this is the set of integers. So this is the set of... Um, 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and so on. So if you consider this set, and if you equip this set with, um, uh, so equip it with um, uh, the operation plus, right? So so this is this is a set of mathematical objects. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna equip it with an operation. What is an operation? It's it's um it's like a function that takes two elements of the set and gives you another element of the set. So for example, we're gonna equip the integers with um, this the operation plus, and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna define um a plus b. Uh, um, by the by the standard usual way of addition that you know right so we're gonna for example define two plus three to be um, to be five right so we're gonna define um, addition for uh, for for Z in this way 
And what happens when we equip Z with, uh, with the addition? Well, we notice quite a few things. So the first thing we notice is that the, the operation plus is binary, right? Um, so, so the plus here is a binary operation. And the definition of a binary operation is that um, you, you, um, uh, you, you require that for every uh, two elements, of the set right for every two elements of the set you require that a plus b remains in the set right so so so, so you're requiring closure under the uh, the the operation that you have right um so this is the first thing and the second thing um that we notice is that uh, we have what's so-called associativity of the, the 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 addition for example, we know that when we add a plus b plus c, it doesn't matter the order we add these. Like we can add b plus c first and then a, or we can add a plus b first and then c. So this is the same as um, a uh, plus b plus c. And this happens, by the way, this is for all a and b and c. So this is for all a, B, and C, and Z, right? So this is a kind of a generic property that we're noticing. What's another thing that we notice about Z, right? So um, the other thing that we notice is that it has an element that is, uh, uh, there is a special element. We ha It has an element zero, right? So what is, what is so special about zero? Well, what's so special about zero is that if you add zero to any other element, if you apply the operation plus, um, um, to to zero and any other element, you get that element back. So what 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 I mean here is that if you take any element a and you add it um, to zero, you get a back. So z has what's so called an identity. It has uh, what's so called an additive identity. Um, and the 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 other thing that we notice about z uh, after we equip it with addition is that every element has an inverse. So what do we mean by that? Well, we mean that, for example, uh, every element. Let's say the element three, for example. Um, you, you, how how do you get zero? You can subtract three, right? So every element for every element in your um, in your set, there's another element which when I add it, which when I add um, this element to the the element I started with, I get zero. So uh, th this this property is what's so called um, uh, an inverse to the element. So what we're saying here for every element a, I can find another element, namely negative a, uh, such that uh, when I add these two, I get zero, right? So um, so it's important here to keep a few things in mind. The first is that. Uh, we, we we are not defining um, more than one operation here so um, so negative one here is not um, is not defined to be like is not defined yet to be uh, subtraction right negative one is thought of as one object of the set so negative one negative two negative three these are elements of the set just as one is like you can look at it as a symbol right so the only operation that we defined so far for this set is addition so you can't tell me i want to divide two elements right because we haven't defined um division for this uh, for this set so all we're saying here is that we're equipping the set with an operation and this operation is addition and this addition is defined in in the usual way we we used to define addition and uh, we notice these properties about uh, about z when we equip it with addition so what we like to do in algebra is that we we like to abstract things we like to make this phenomenon that happening that happened for z we like to make it more general we like to to define things in in, in general terms and see who else uh, or or which other mathematical um or, or which other sets when which when we equip with operations they give us um, um these properties right so um so we're going to now define uh, what a group is in, in, in general terms. So a group G, um, a group G, right, uh, it's a set, right? This is an important word. It's a set of elements. It's a set of things, right? It's a set which has an operation, right? This, is, this should be, should be 
a binary operation and let me just clarify here what I mean ie uh, for every uh, element g and element h in g it should be that g um, operation h it should be uh, in g right so if i apply the operation like this operation can be uh, division addition multiplication uh, whatever the operation is it can be a composition of functions it can be it can be anything like as as long as it is legit right so uh, this operation um, um the the um the the it has to be a binary operation right so this has to be a binary operation in the sense that um the there is closure under this operation right g is closed under this operation and it satisfies these three properties that we noticed uh, they happen for Z, right? What are these three properties? Well, the first one is that uh, we require the operation to be um, to be uh, associative in the sense that it shouldn't matter in what order uh, we, uh, we take the operation for three elements of the group. Like, we can take the operation for X, Y, and then take it for Z, or we can start with Y, Z, and then take it for X, right? So this is very important. Like, uh, I understand that this is kind of very abstract at, at the moment, but we're going to take examples to make this more clear. So ju I just want you to think here that uh, this um, this star is is like um, uh, is like addition. It's just an operation, right? Um, but we're we're but this addition it can be addition of uh, of matrices, for example. It can be addition of uh, numbers. So. The definition of addition uh, differ depending on what set G we're working with. If we're working with a set of matrices, for example, uh, addition sh should mean like um, addition of matrices. The, 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 for example, it can be the, the element, the, the entry-wise um, addition of matrices. However, um, it's different, and this is different than the, the addition of uh, two real numbers, right? or two integers so um so this is why we're abstracting things right so um first of first we said that the the operation should be binary right this is a very important thing and second it should be associative right it shouldn't matter in what order we do the operation and um in what order in the sense if we have three uh, of these in what order we perform the operation um uh, and second um it, there should be in G an element that is uh, that we call an identity. This is a very important concept that we're gonna see how important it is um, as we go in the lectures. Uh, so there should be an element called uh, the identity, and this element um, satisfies the property that um, whenever you perform the operation uh, with E, so we're gonna call the identity E. Whenever you uh, perform the operation between E and X, any other element, it's important to note here that this, this symbol means for all, right? This means for all. So, uh, so for all X, it should be that um, when we take the operation X uh, star E or E star X, we should get X back. Just as analogously, just as we had uh, for Z, we had the zero element where we had zero uh, uh, plus any element A is equal to A plus zero is equal to A. Um, just as we had this for Z, uh, we're, we're abstracting things here and we're saying that we require uh, the operation, uh, we require the group to, to, uh, to have an identity um, we require the set to have an identity, and this identity should satisfy the property that whenever it's, uh, uh, whenever we take uh, the operation with any other element of G, uh, we get that element back, right? So um, it's important here to keep in mind uh, that it's not always the case that zero is the identity. For example, if we take star to be uh, multiplication, for example, if we take star to be multiplication, then what would be an identity here? Well, the identity in that case would be 1, right? Because the only element, for example, if we're talking about the real numbers, for example, um, um, the real numbers, uh, let's say, minus 0, right? Um, so, um, so if we take the 0 from it, so the only element of... Um, 
uh, of this set where uh, if we take x uh, dot that element is the same as uh, that element dot x um, it's the same as x right so the only element is one the only element where when we take multiplication with it uh, with any other element we get that element back is one right which is uh, the, the 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 real number one um so so the identity here it's an abstract definition uh it's an abstract uh thing of the um um uh, of this set, of whatever set we're working with um so um so the, the next property that we observed for C and we're going to require it for the general uh, definition of groups is that uh, every element should have an inverse. And this is a very important, very, very important part uh, of the definition. So this is called the inverse right so for every for each x and g this is very important for each x and g it's not enough that uh, some elements of g have this property it should be each and every one of these right each and every element of g should have this property that um uh, that that for every x there is an inverse there is another element in g where uh, if we if we perform the operation between x and this element uh, in in either order right it's in either order we're gonna we're gonna have an identity back so i remind you this is analogous to the property that for every for every integer a for every uh, element of z a we have another element which is negative a which when we add these two we get zero right so this is the identity in z right and this is any element in Z. And this is the inverse of A. And you notice here, this can be added in, in either order, right? In either order is going to give us zero, right? So this is very important, right? So again, what we did is that we, we observed some property uh, for Z when, when we equip it with addition. We observed like four properties. The first one is that uh, the operation is binary, meaning if we add two integers, we still get an integer, we still get an element of the set. So uh, we get closure under the operation and we force the operation of, of the generic set that we're talking about to be binary. And the second property is that we require the operation to be associative in the sense that uh, it shouldn't matter how you add the three elements. It shouldn't matter in what order you add three elements of the set, right? And the third property is that we require the, the set to have what's so-called an identity. An identity, it's an element of the set, which when added to any other element, it gives us uh, it gives us the element back, right? So this is very important. So when when we talk about multiplication, for example, in the real numbers, um, if we omit zero, uh, the, um, um, the 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 identity is one, is the real number one. If we talk about, for example, say the integers, uh, when when we equip it with addition instead of multiplication. Uh, we have the identity is zero because when we add zero to any other element, we get the element back, right? So uh, the, the, the last property that we required, which is a very important property, is that uh, we require that each and every element of the set to have what's so-called an inverse. And what is an inverse? Well, an inverse, it's an element associated to another element, which when we add these two, when we add these two elements, we get um, the the identity back. For example, for the integers, when we add the element and it's negative, but and and the negative of it uh, as an inverse of it, we we get zero, which is the identity in Z, right? So we're gonna take more examples, but I but I I thought that I should um, give this its time because uh, it's a very important definition that's gonna be like it's in the core of the course, right? So um, it's very important. To, to, to make sure that you, you understood this definition. And this is going to be refined as we give uh, more examples. Um, so let us go and take some examples um, and we'll see how important um, this definition is later. Um, so um, so he, he, here are a few examples. If you take the, the, the integers, right? 
and you equip it with addition so I remind you this is the star so over here this is the operation star right so um, so th this is the first example of a group and uh, we usually denote the group in this form we take the group uh, we take the set and we, we write the operation over here so this is the set and this is the operation and this uh, tuple notation is uh, a notation for uh, what a group is right so uh, another example is when we take the rational numbers and we equip it with addition we're gonna we're gonna um we're gonna prove that um uh these are groups um as as um but let me just uh, go over these and then we're gonna prove that these are groups right so um um if we take also the real numbers right if we take the real numbers and we we equip it with addition we also have a group if we take the complex numbers if you ever seen complex numbers and we equip them with addition we also get um, a group if we take the real numbers and we omit zero from this set and we equip it with the operation so star in this case is multiplication which I'm denoting here by the dot right it's the multiplication right we usually replace the dot uh, the, the the times that you used to do with uh, dot to just uh, avoid conflict with uh, the letter x right um um so 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 when we equip the non-zero real numbers with multiplication we also get a group now it's time to prove this it's time to see why why these assertions are so why is it the case that um, these are actually groups right so i've already shown you uh, why z with addition is a group so um but 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 i haven't written a formal proof so i think it would be uh it would be worth it to go over a proof of why r with addition is um is a group and the rest of these like this thing this thing and this thing will have uh the exact same proofs except that we'll be replacing uh, r by the other set right so let us prove that and then we're gonna prove uh, this thing over here so um um so as we go as we go in the proofs i i i advise you to to grab a piece of paper and uh, to start writing uh, the tricks appearing in the proofs because these tricks are gonna be used uh, over and over again and these tricks are gonna be um, important for you when trying to prove um, when trying to prove um, uh, other uh, other proofs um, uh, as we go in the course um, so um, so so let us start by proving that R is actually uh, a group when equipped with addition. So this is uh, proposition one. Um, proposition one. The real numbers when equipped with addition is a group. Right. So here is the proof. So what's the first thing that we need to show when proving? Um, something is a group well the first thing that we need to show is that the operation is binary in the sense that the the the, the set is closed under the operation so let us see what i mean here so um so if you take any two numbers a and b and it's very important it's very important that your proof um is 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 uh, is generic right it's it you can't just tell me i'm proving one plus two is three and thus uh, this is an r and thus it works right it doesn't work like that it, it's a proof right um so um so what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna take any two elements of the real numbers and what we're gonna do is um um so um so we started with any two elements and we're gonna just say that a plus b is an r and this is uh, we're gonna say this is trivial right so this is by definition i would say so this is by definition 
trivial by definition, okay? So this is clear. If you take any two real numbers, you add them up, you still get a real number, right? So the second property, so let me just state here, what is this property that we just proved? Um, the We proved that addition is a binary operation. All right, so the second property that we need to prove is what's so-called associativity of addition. And why why is the, um, the, the, the addition associative? Well, again, this is clear, right? So an addition in a real number is clear why it's associative. So this is by definition also. So this is, uh, we're gonna again say for every A, B, C in R, let me just be clear. So this means for all, and this means in or belongs, right? So for every A, B, C, and R, we notice that A plus uh, B plus C is the same as A plus B plus C. It doesn't matter in what order we add these, and this is also clear by definition, right? So this is clear by definition of the addition. So let us go ahead and prove the next thing. Uh, the next thing that we need to show uh, to prove uh, this set is a group is to prove that um, uh, there is an identity. All right, and this is very important. It's very important because um, you will see later on that depending on the operation, um, the, the identity can be different, right? Depending on what the operation is. And we're going to see this in, in this in this lecture. Um, so uh, there is an identity E. And what do you think the identity is? Well, the identity under addition, it better be zero. And let us see why. So it's the zero, the real number zero. So the identity here, uh, so we're going to start for every X in R, for every real number X, we notice that X plus zero is equal to 0 plus x is equal to x. So this is by definition of the 0 of the real number. And thus, this is the identity. Right? But we have to show why it is the identity. It is the identity because it satisfies the property defining what an identity is. Right? This is very important. So uh, the fourth thing that we have to show is that um, the um, so um, that every element of R has an inverse? But before we do that, let me just um, um, let me just uh, ask you a question here. So, what would happen if we if we were to omit zero from R? So, if we take the real numbers and we omit zero from it, what would happen? Will this still be a group? Well, it won't because. Um, so we just omitted the identity from it. If we omit zero from the set, then this is no longer a group because it doesn't have an identity. There is no other element in, in the real numbers. If we omit zero, there is no other element that um, that satisfy the property that when we add it to, like when we start with any other element and we add that element to it, we get that element. We get that element back. So there is no there is no other real number with the similar property. Um, so, so it's important to note that um, th this is chosen perfectly so that it is, it is, it has the properties that makes it a group, right? So this is not a group. And I remind you uh, of one technique of proofs uh, when you want to prove um, something is not. Uh, or doesn't have a certain property, it's, an, it's, it's enough to give a counter example. It's enough to give a counter example or to uh, point out um, the failure of some property. So uh, in this case, um, uh, the failure happens, um, there is no identity. Right? So there is no identity and this is the reason why this is not a group. All right. So the first, the, the the fourth property that we have to show is that for every x in R, right? For every real number in R, we want an inverse of this. So let me remind you: an inverse is an element. So we're searching with this for this element over here. It's an element which, when we add it from either side to x. And by adding here, I mean apply the operation because our operation here is, our star here is this addition. 
and um, so when added to x, it, it gives x back. So um, um, so um, so if you look at this, what what would be an element that would make this the case? Uh, excuse me, this should be uh, zero because this is the identity, right? Identity, right? What's the identity over here? It's zero. So we, we require that we we are asking for an element which when we add it to x. Um, uh, from either side it gives us zero and the the, the element here is going to be negative x right it's clear right so the element here is going to be negative x and negative x it's important to note that negative x is in r right and and this is another important thing if if i were to tell you if i were to tell you is the set r plus with a plus and by r plus i mean um zero infinity and by that I mean um, the uh, all the real numbers that are positive, right? So if I tell you, is this a group? Well, this is not a group. And why is that? It's because um, like elements don't have inverses, right? So um, so if you for example, it's important. Uh, it's enough to give a counter example here. Why this is not a this is not a group? So counter example one the element one doesn't have an inverse. Why is that? Because its inverse is negative one, but the inverse is is not there. I mean the inverse is not here, right? So so um so again this was chosen so that or satisfies all the property which makes it a group, right? So uh, it's important that the inverse is inside the set. This is very important, okay? So this proves that um, R is in fact, R when equipped with addition is indeed a group, right? So let us see what happens when we equip uh, the non-zero real numbers with multiplication. This is the other um, example that I wanted to prove for you. Uh, I advise you uh, just for practice to prove that uh, this, this, and this um, 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 are actually uh, groups, right? So these are like, you're gonna follow up this proof uh, uh, exactly and you'll get the proof, right? So, um, um, so let us... Um, let us prove that. Let us prove um, that R, uh, the non-zero real numbers when equipped with uh, multiplication is indeed a group. So here's a proposition. Um, R, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna use some terminology here. R cross, um, when equipped with addition, um, excuse me, when equipped with multiplication is a group. And by R cross, I mean this is the set of real numbers if we take away zero from it. Okay, so let us prove that this is a group. Again, what's the first thing that we need to prove when we uh, want to prove something is a group? Well, the first thing we want to do is we're going to prove that the operation, so this is our operation, this is our star here, right? So we're going to prove that star is binary. And by dot here, I mean uh, multiplication of real numbers. So why is this a binary operation? In other words, why is R closed under, uh, why is R, um, R, R stored or R cross uh, closed under multiplication? Uh, let's see here. So if you take any two real numbers, so for every um, R and S in R cross, Right for for any two um, two non-zero real numbers, for any non two non-zero real numbers R and S, we have that when we multiply these together, we get an element that's also non-zero, and it's also an R. So so it's clear that uh, the 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 element will be a real number. If you t you take two real numbers and multiply them, you also get a real number. But um, so, uh, but it's also clear that uh, it's non-zero because this is non-zero and this is non-zero. Thus, the, if you multiply two non-zero um, real numbers, you also get a non-zero real number, and hence these are in this set. So the the operation is binary. So the next um, the next property that we need to check is that this operation is. Um, um, it is associative 
and this is in fact evident like this is clear this is clear by the um the the, the definition of multiplication and let us see why well for every three real numbers or s and t that are non-zero right for every three such real numbers uh, if you multiply um them in this order or if you multiply them in this order it's the same right so there is it doesn't matter in what order you you multiply these and thus the 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 the, the multiplication is associative so this is let me just say clear by definition it's it usually it sometimes requires um some some work to prove uh why an operation is associative but usually it follows uh, immediately by definition of the operation um so um so the third thing that we need to check is whether or not there is an identity so there is an identity uh what is the identity over here Right. So previously, when we had um, the real numbers with addition, we said that the identity E is zero. Right. But what is the identity here? Well, uh, you, you might have a guess, which is one. And that's trivial. But but let us see how to um, how to um, like develop the intuition of why the identity is one in this case. So what we want is that we want for every real number X that is not zero. We want that when we multiply x by uh, by e um, to have the same as we multiply e by that x, uh, and we we want to have um, um, the 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 element x back. So what element? Uh, what element of the real numbers? Uh, which when we when we multiply it by any other element, it gives us the element back. What element when when we multiply it by any x, it gives us x back? Well, the only such element is one, right? So this is um, this is the reason why the the identity is one in this case. So um, so the, the the fourth property that we need to do is what's so called the inverses. So we we require that every element of the non-zero real numbers to have inverses. Um, so so but but before we before we do that, let me stress here. Like if we were to take r minus zero and one, if we take um, the real numbers and we take away uh, 0 and 1 then this is no longer a group this thing will no longer be a group because we're we're omitting the identity so it's important that the identity is there it's important that the identity is present in the set right so this is not a group the identity isn't there right so this is important for you, okay? So, um, so uh, the fourth thing we need to do is inverses. Why, why every element has an inverse? So we're gonna start for, with any element of the real numbers that is not zero, and we want to find an inverse of it. So what is the inverse of any element x? So what's the definition of inverse? It's it's an element which when we apply the operation, the operation is multiplication here, which when we multiply the operation um, uh, to, to x and that element, same as multiplying that element and then x, um, uh, and we require this to be uh, the identity. And what's the identity here? Well, the identity is not zero. Please be careful. The identity is relevant to what set and operation you have. The identity is relevant to what group you're talking about. The identity over here is one. Like, this is the identity, right? So the, the definition of inverse, it's not that uh, x star times x inverse is zero. This is not the definition. The definition is that x times x inverse should be e, should be the identity. And the identity over here is one, right? So what element we can multiply um, x by to get, um, to get um, uh, the identity, uh, which is one? Well, it's evident that we we need to get rid of uh, get rid of x, so we need to divide by x. So we're gonna multiply by one over x. We're gonna multiply here by one over x, and thus when we multiply these out, we get one. Um, but there's there's an important thing here to stress, which is that why is one over x in the set? 
like be because it's a very important that the element should be in the set remember here this identity should be in the set right it's important that it is in the set right it's important that every every element of of the set has an inverse inside the set right so it's important that the inverse in the set why is 1 over x in the set well because x is not zero and this is very important like if if we if we if we just took the real numbers and we allowed zero to be in the set right then one over zero is infinity it's not in the set right one over zero is not in the set thus um, this is this is the reason why we took out zero right we took out zero so that every element has an inverse right and since every element is non-zero one over x is always in the set is always a real number right and thus th th this is this proves that uh, this this um uh, this set when equipped with uh multiplication it forms a group right so um these are um, some important examples, uh, but these are kind of basic examples. And we'll be doing uh, what we'll be doing next time is that we'll be uh, covering some uh, more advanced examples of groups, and we'll be talking about uh, notions of subgroups uh, and other stuff.